Continuing our challenge of building massive game-breaking rockets, I embarked on a journey to EVE, one of the most difficult planets in Kerbal Space Program, along with its moon Gilly. This ambitious mission required two rovers, one for Gilly's low gravity and another for EVE's harsh atmosphere, and of course a descent and ascent rocket for EVE. Unfortunately, due to game-breaking joint issues, my rocket had a tendency to wobble and disintegrate. I was left with no choice but to enable unbreakable joints. Due to the rocket's sheer size and ridiculous number of engines, the performance caused a multi-hour process to orbit Kerbin. This would have taken just a few minutes to complete. But thankfully, as we decoupled the early launch stages, it slightly improved performance and I finally achieved orbit. With the new science parts unlocked in the previous episode, these being atmosphere, orbital and radiation surveys, they offered a huge science boost for this mission. I began collecting science while orbiting Kerbin, then plotted a course for EVE's sphere of influence. And I have to say, after studying orbital mechanics a little, it's made a massive difference to my gameplay. Being able to simply create a maneuver from Kerbin straight to EVE saves a lot of time and fuel. Because previously, I bent my way straight to the sun and then created a maneuver to EVE. That wasted a lot of unnecessary time. After arriving at EVE's sphere of influence, I plotted a course for Gilly, known for its low gravity fun. Once in orbit, I used all the surveys to gather signs from each research location. Taking advantage of Kerbin's tracking station, I efficiently time off to collect data from all their locations which do take quite a bit of time to collect data from. Once complete, I detached the hover rover and clumsily landed on various research points, while our Kerbal passenger enjoyed some low gravity fun. Honestly, just one jump propels you ridiculously high. After collecting all the science, it was time to make our way back to the main ship. And thankfully docking wasn't necessary, so we had to simply hover our way close to the ship with our vessel, then simply EVA the Kerbal back to the main vessel. A simple but efficient maneuver despite the darkness. Now it is time to head to EVE. At first I set our periapsis slightly within EVE's atmosphere to allow us to gently error break our rocket. And the plan was that it wouldn't increase the heat to the point the ship explodes. It would have two fold benefits. Firstly, we could collect low orbit EVE science. Then secondly, we could collect the atmospheric science. The science would need to be collected through the various research locations and that may require us to adjust our orbit slightly for the very specific locations such as Olympus, which was essentially a huge mountain on EVE and there's only one of them. So after many orbits and loops around the planet, the plan was to allow it to air break us, but that didn't exactly happen. The atmosphere was way too thin that it barely makes a difference to our apoapsis. And if we went any deeper into the atmosphere, it would very quickly fry the rocket out of existence. So do keep in mind that I previously tested with heat shields and fairings, but they don't seem to be working properly at the moment. So the reason why I brought over so much fuel was essentially to allow us to burn retrograde and circleize the orbit ourselves. So after doing exactly that and burning a lot of fuel, most of the time I used the tracking station to very quickly time warp at maximum speed to get all the science. Because unfortunately some of the science requires you to be exposed to the research location for a few minutes and that could be a bit challenging for the very small locations. After getting science from about 4 out of the 5 locations, it was time to get the atmospheric science. So the requirement was to stay roughly under 90,000 meters in altitude, and I had to be careful not to go too low, otherwise we would be very quickly incinerated. Um, now I did test this of course, where I stayed within 75,000 meters once, and the craft just broke apart. So to prevent this, I closely monitored our apoapsis and periapsis whilst in the atmosphere just to maintain a kind of steady height. And initially, I did do a few short burns to just prevent 
us from descending into into the atmosphere. And eventually all of the locations except for one were complete. That being Olympus. This is by far one of the more impossible locations to unlock. In fact, for the low orbit science for Olympus, I was unable to unlock it because our orbit versus the position of Olympus, it just barely never matched up. Even with time warping, it just was impossible to get the science out of it. So I don't know if it's feasible in any way to get it, but do let me know if you're able to do it. Now, aside from that, we had a plan to get the atmospheric science for Olympus because I did think this was possible. And the way we're going to do it is we would burn retrograde and slowly descend exactly on top of Olympus. So that while the rocket falls into the atmosphere, it would hopefully provide enough time to collect the atmospheric science right above Olympus. And it actually worked out pretty well. Though there were some problems with parachutes breaking, but thankfully we're able to just pause the game and repair the parachutes along the way. Totally realistic. Then came the next biggest challenge there is, actually landing on EVE. We fell over a few times. This was a very painful process. I knew this would be a big issue because Olympus is literally a big mountain, so it consists mostly of steep hills and cliffs and slopes and stuff. But after much persistence, we actually landed. What a relief that was, but it was definitely worth it. This is one of the most impressive views on EVE. Just look at that. Now this mountain literally reaches the clouds, that's how tall it is. And so I do recommend that if you do visit EVE, head to Olympus because you will save some fuel when it comes to ascending back to space. Now it was time to eject our rover. In my testing, the rover would act a little bit strange. It, it would sporadically jump all over the place and just destroy itself. So this is going to be a bit of a risky test. Then after moving back and forth a few times, the rover was out from underneath a rocket. It was a success. So now time to collect science. Now the science values from EVE and ELU are the absolute highest when it comes to being on land. And that was exactly our goal for this mission. I collected science on Olympus, then started our expedition around EVE to travel to the other locations. However, driving down the mountain was hell. The buggy would constantly flip and tumble, breaking the solar panel on the back. I tried to adjust the wheel settings, but it didn't seem to help much. I think if I made this buggy a little longer and perhaps wider, it would help reduce these problems from occurring. But still, it's very, very strange. Then the worst thing imaginable happened. After taking a break and loading the game, our ascent vehicle decided it wanted to ascend by itself. It jumped into the air. <laughs> oh no. This is very demoralizing. I reverted the save, adjusting the landing gears to no benefit. It just kept jumping. <laughs> oh no. Almost like the rocket wanted to become a kangaroo. Yeah. But after a while, I just gave up and figured let's just continue down the mountain with a rover and hope that the ascent vehicle lands upright on our return. And so our long adventure began. Driving to the various research locations, we got a crazy amount of science. First we went to foothills, shallows, and then seals. We traveled very, very far. There were a couple of rover flips along the way, causing me to have constantly revert the save. Eventually we did make it to the ocean, and I dunked our buggy directly into the sea. But you might be wondering, how do we get it out of the sea? Well, Kerbals are able to somewhat push the buggy, so we're safe with them, gently taking us back to shore. Though this location is a little odd. You see, when you're in the water itself, the science values for seas are just completely broken. You'll get a pathetic number of science points. However, if you're on land and it thinks you're in the seas, you're in luck because you will get the full proper science values on land. Go figure, very, very strange. 
who wrote this? Okay, well, regardless, then came the long drive back to our ascent vehicle. One annoying thing is that sometimes when one wheel was touching the ground, but the other side wasn't, the ship would sharply turn in one direction. This would cause the buggy to flip over very often. So it kept me on my heels most of the time because I had to check the terrain to see if there's any somewhat weird looking terrain that would cause this problem. Approaching our destination, I traveled up the steep mountain and as expected, despair hit me. Hours of driving around the planet, wasted. <laughs> our ascent vehicle tried to jump like a kangaroo again and inevitably it exploded into pieces. Oh, again. Thankfully, the game has a helpful teleport feature. So I had to teleport the ascent rocket straight from the VAB. It was very fresh and I didn't really want to do that, but the game is truly cheating against us. And the only way to combat it was to cheat, unfortunately. So, eh, you forced me. Finally, I got out of our buggy, dumped the existing Kerbal that was in the ascent rocket onto the ground and then climbed up the ladders. We were ready to go back to Kerbin. I ejected the ladders and parachutes and finally, at the same time, we ejected the landing legs, okay. our engines activated. With a very loud bang, we started ascending. It's quite a beautiful sight to see us fly up through the clouds leaving behind our rover and a poor innocent Kerbal stranded on Eve forever. After decoupling the various stages of fuel tanks, we eventually achieved orbit. Or at least it looked like an orbit based on the apoapsis and periapsis. Unfortunately, the orbit was invisible. The Kraken really didn't want us to return home. So now I still needed a rocket to pick up this ascent rocket from EVE and return back to Kerbin. So back at the KSC, I quickly built another rocket, launched it, went straight to EVE. Now, unfortunately, the Kraken got really, really mad for the third time. Somehow, our ascent ship from before was no longer in orbit. It was now falling back to EVE. Uh, again, <laughs> the Kraken here was in full burn crazy mode. So I once again did what I didn't want to do. I had to teleport the ascent ship back into orbit and enable it to rendezvous with our return ship. This really, really sucked. Though I know I could have done this legitimately if not for these game breaking issues. Anyway, I burnt our way back to Kerbin and flew through the atmosphere at breakneck speeds to finally splash down safely in the pitch black night of the ocean. Then I recovered our vessel and bam. Now, if you recall, last episode we had earned a staggering 16,943 signs on our first launch. This time, our mission to Gilly, then even back, earned us 62,601 signs. What an achievement with all the odds stacked against us when it comes to bugs and krakens. So finally, let's spend this science. After all this hard work, my priority is to still unlock the remaining two science parts. Though only the you dunk it part will actually earn us some additional science points. That's the submarine looking thing. As for the mini lab, it does the exact same thing as a star lab. So not much difference there. Furthermore, given that most of us like space planes, I figured we would try and unlock most of the plane related parts. Therefore, in the next final episode of this series, the goal would be to head over Elu and Laith to complete this ridiculous, crazy journey. And you know what's funny? We haven't even bothered doing most of the missions, except for the few initial launch missions. So as usual, I'll link the build in the description for you to try. Oh, and don't forget to let me know if you'd like me to visit another moon. Obviously, we're going to go to Laith, but do you want me to go to Val or anywhere else? Do tell. Thank you for watching.